Hi, my name is Mike. Welcome to my world. My wife and I, we own Tenonizer Technology. And years ago, we made an instructional video, the very first one, Log Furniture 101. Well, now, here we are 20 some years later. And we've learned a few things along the way. We want to pass them on to you. We're doing Log Furniture 101 rebooted. That's our intent. Who knows what's coming next? It could be a hoot. It could be a bomb. But you know what? We're going to enjoy the journey. So why don't you come with us? At least a day or two or a little piece in here and there along the way. Come and have some fun with us as we make stuff out of wood. Try stuff. Show you what we've learned. So come along. Join the fun. If you're going to build some log furniture, you need something to build it with. To stand the trees, the kids planted it back in 1996. It could stand to be thinned out a little bit. We'll pull some of the split top or the, where the candle was busted out of it or something. We'll pull a couple of jack pine, a couple of Norway. We'll bring them up to pressure wash because this is the time of year, April or May, when the buds are just coming out. This is when you can pressure wash it and get a perfect product to build from. Now when you're working in the woods, you got to keep safety paramount in your thinking all the time. Don't think you need to go fast. This kind of accuracy, this kind of speed, only comes about by a couple of methods. Great amount of time practice spent in the woods, or 
You know, you can also do it by hitting fast forward on the editing equipment. Either way, keep all your fingers, keep all your toes, keep them all undamaged, all in one piece, because you need them for things like, you know, all sorts of stuff. Like tying this fancy knot. You know, and it's all, oh, this knot, yes, it is a, just a bowl of knot, a rabbit knot, and you just loop it around and tie it so it comes in sort of like a choker on a skitter. But nice thing about it is that it's so easy to untie. It's fast and uh, it comes apart. It doesn't matter how much that old cow pulls on it, it just slips apart. Of the trees that I brought up, there's two different species. One, the Norway pine has the reddish colored bark and long needles. The other one, jack pine, the darker colored bark and short needles. But there's a major difference between the two species. The Norway pine rots really fast. You don't want to put it in a wet environment ever. The jack pine lasts a little bit longer, but it's still not a real good wood for outside. Cedar is a much better wood and that still has its own limitations. But of the characteristics for furniture, the Norway pine, personally, I think it's kind of boring. Unless you do something like forcing it to have bug tracks or sap stained stuff. And in order you can get it to get a tan, just like we get a tan, by leaving it in the sunshine. Other thing about the jack pine, it's got much more character. The branches come out during the, um, each new season, of course, but they come out wherever, they're sporadic. Or on the Norway pine, the red colored bark trees, the branches only come out in one circle, circle around the tree. They always come out in one little circle around and then you can look at the tree and go, wow, it's like some of these are two feet, three feet between the circle of branches. Well, that three feet, that's how much that tree grew in height in just one year. Kind of amazing how they are stretching for the sunlight. See how silky smooth that is, cleaned up like it is? And it's just like shiny smooth. But if I was to approach it at a, like more of a straight on angle, like straight at it, 90 degrees, it would tear that wood apart. Take note, look at how steep the angle of approach is that I'm coming at that wood. I'm running like, oh, 20 degrees to the wood instead of 90, 15 to 20 degrees, very steep. Otherwise, it'll just shred it. Now, you see the spots on that jack pine I'm hitting there? The brown streaky spots on it. That tree was dying. It was running out, not of water. It had plenty of water where it was growing, but it didn't have enough sunlight. It was an understory tree, and the thing was dying. You know, it's better to take it out and use it for something than to just leave it be dead in the woods, firewood. The pressure washer that I'm running it's a 13 horse Honda, extremely reliable. It's got a cat pump and the water supply or the, the rate that it's turning, four gallons a minute supply and it's running at 3,000 pounds pressure. Other thing you wanna watch is the hose that this connected to. Do not use one of those frost proof faucet connections. They allow little, um, air bubbles to get sucked into the system and then the pump will cavitate and you go why isn't it working i'm gonna call the rental agency and squawk at them because it's not working like it's supposed to well if you use a frost proof faucet they allow air bubbles to siphon into the water supply it'll cause the pump to cavitate so just use straight from the from the uh, pressure tank something where it, isn't, uh, where it doesn't have any chance of getting a contaminant, air bubble or otherwise, into the water supply. Key ingredient to making all of this work is the nozzle. Make sure you get it sized correctly to the pressure washer that you're using. I like more horsepower, that's nice. This one, as I said, four gallons a minute, 3,000 pounds pressure. It puts out that little cone-shaped looking thing as you're using it. But it's, <clears throat> but it's one little pinpoint stream of water that's spinning in a, th in a circle at several thousand RPM. 
Don't get your finger in front of that nozzle or anything else. It'll take off skin just as fast as it'll take off bark. This is Northern White Cedar. It's become my favorite wood to use. It's got a lot of character. You don't need a pressure washer to clean it up, usually. You can just pull the bark off of it. And depending upon the tree, where it was growing, how it was growing, if it was in a fairly tight stand, you might have to leave it lay for two or three years before you can get the bark off of it. This stuff is five years old. We bought it when it had been down for a year, brought in for resale by one of the wood jockeys. And we, what we bought at the time, about a semi-load, most of it peeled, about three-fourths of it, and then this stuff left out in the yard for another year, and then we cycled through it again, peeling what we could, and left it for another year, and then cycled through and peeled what we could, and now this stuff is uh, four or five years old now, and then it's fine, finally peeling, and it'll go into something, bar stools or handrail or something. Another thing, it weighs less than half of what Norway pine or jack pine does. Hey, how you doing? Welcome to my loft, or in this case, the dry kiln, where it's going to cook the wood absolutely perfect, and it's not going to cost a penny. There. Perfect is good enough. It's gonna cook dry, gonna be absolutely perfect. Except, look at my hands. I should have worn some gloves. This stuff is covered with sap. <laughs>